we've already done a bunch of this stuff, but the next thing was configuring your environment. All right, I didn't tape it, but since we only have to do it once, I didn't think it was really necessary to do that. So it says in this lesson, you install all the tools that you'll need. We've already installed Node.js. You've said you've got Visual Studio Code. You've got Git, which is your SCM, that's your source control manager tool. And we're gonna look at REPL in just a couple of minutes. All right. Now, one thing to notice, it says installing Node.js. There's a pretty good chance I mean, when, when I did mine, it was 12.16.3. That wasn't very long ago. This stuff is being upgraded all the time. And when, you know, but there's what I want you to understand is, remember when you, when you typed in node minus V and it said 12.16.3? It's version 12, all right? And it's version 12, so if it's 12.6, 12, 12 the next number is... First number is the verge version, the second number is the release. And then <clears throat> basically that last number, for lack of better words, is kind of the update. All right. Sometimes it'll go in the, you know, it might go next to 12.6.4, or it might go to 12.7. It could even go to 13. Now, normally when when uh, the system goes and it has a new last number like that, that 0.3, that means it was, it's fairly minor stuff that was added. All right. And a lot of times what it is, is it's a bug fix. There's something that was in there earlier that somehow was screwed up. When it goes from like 12.6 dot something to 12.7 dot something, it, there are some new features in it. When it's a really big change, the whole version number changes, just so you know that. So they show you uh, the downloads page on page 13. We already went through this. All right. There's different ways that you can do this. They mentioned to you that there's a lot of different ways that you can do it. And they even suggest, they say, hey, there's even other, you know, don't worry about any of that stuff. Okay. You can go look at it. But what I showed you, I'm, again, I'm shooting to try to show you the most intuitive way of doing things. All right. So terminal end your path. Okay. If you look, I'm on page 15. Let's see if we can do this. Try it like this. All right. If if you would do this, yours won't look nearly as ugly as mine. Um, in the bottom left-hand corner of your screen, do you have the little search? bar in there. Mm -hmm. Type in CMD and hit enter. And it should bring up a window that looks like your Git window, but it's not your Git window. Mm -hmm. Okay? Type in the word path and hit enter. Now mine is about 15 lines long. Yours might only be two or three lines long. That is the path that the system goes through when it is looking for any software. Somewhere in there you have node. You have to because when you otherwise when you typed it in before, when you know when you typed in node minus v, it wouldn't have found it. It looked through the whole system and it, eventually it looked under program files and it said, oh, you've got something in there called node. Okay. But if you want more explanation than that, it's on page 15 in the book. I don't know if that's really that important a thing or not. All right, you can close this. You can either type exit and just hit enter, or you can even click the X in the upper uh, right-hand corner. It doesn't matter. All right. Next is installing the text editor. You've already done that. Okay. Now, I'm going to have you do this. Um, Which one of these I use? Okay, you don't have to do this right now, 
Okay, but what I'm going to do, I'll do it during the break. There's two or three different sites that we can go on to. You can set it up so Visual Studio automatically, we're going to look at running the terminal in Visual Studio in just a bit. You can set that up so what that brings in by default, it brings in its own terminal. Visual Studio Code has got its own, which works just fine. But you can use Git Bash as your default, so it'll bring that up. I think that's easier to do. I'll show it to you, and if you want to do it, you can do it. If you don't, you won't have to. So again, we've got the text editor put in there. Setting up the SCM on page 17. Again, you've already got the, the Actually, believe it or not, there's good news. Um, I think when we did this last spring, or whenever we well, I had you and you know, and everybody in the class do that with Git, there was actually a bug that didn't, it didn't typically come up with an error, but it could in that version. And the only reason I'm telling you that is that was the version that I had this summer. And when I brought it up for the first time, it came up and it said, you should change your version because there's a bug in this. Okay. So we've set up our SCM. Then they go through the, the, this author, good, bad, or indifferent, tries to be unbelievably complete. So there'll be a lot of times in here where he'll explain how to do something. You go, and this is how you do it on the Mac. He might go off for two, three, four pages. Just skip that stuff. All right, last thing in this chapter, starting on page 19. Working with the node.js REPL in terminal. Can you see that? Mm -hmm. All right, this is what I want you to do. Okay, for right now, and, and we're, this, we're, I'm making this unbelievably easy. Okay, um, let's see. Let's start up Visual Studio Code. Now, normally we're going to set up a whole folder structure, etc. I'm not even going to do any of that right now. Okay, but what I want you to do, I've got a bunch of stuff open in here, so I'm just going to, I'm going to close this. So. Do you have any, if you've got any files open in, in uh, right now in Visual Studio Code, just close them, okay? See, it's just asking me. I don't want to save that. Okay, so I've got nothing. So then do a file, new file, and all I want you to type in there, all in lowercase, console.log, so console period log, and then in, in parentheses, just put hello world. That's kind of the standard for your first program that you write. So one line, console.log, and in parentheses, and in double quotes in the parentheses, hello world, and a semicolon on the end. Now, our author saves everything as main.js. Let's just save this right to the desktop. So type in file, save as. Make sure you're saving it right to the desktop. And I always recommend to people that when you're saving it, you're giving it a name, put it in double quotes. So we're going to type in main.js. So double quote main.js, double quote, and hit enter. Tell me when you got that done. Okay. Now you're about to run your first node application. Go back into Git. Clear your screen if you want to, but just type in the word node space index, not index, what do we call it? Main. Main.js. Oh, mine came up with errors. Oh, because I didn't put my ending double quote on there. Bet you you did. I didn't. Yep, there it is. Did it come out and on the command line did it say hello world? Yeah. And it worked. And there's mine. Just so you know, it's not a big thing. We're going to type it in again. But when you type it in this time, leave off the .js. So just type in node space main and hit enter. 
and it should work. Because REPL, this is the, the editor that's built in for Node, it expects that if you don't put an extension on a file name, that the file is a JavaScript file. Okay. Now, there's a lot more to this editor, so we're just going to take a quick look. I think that is in this particular chapter. So, as it says, REPL actually stands for Read, Evaluate, Print, Loop. All right. You can actually use it and go right inside of there and write code inside of the actual editor itself if you want to do it. All right. And there's absolutely nothing wrong with doing it. Okay, you can actually write, and you can write lines of uh, you know, commands and stuff. They show you some stuff to put in there on page 20. I'm not going to have do any of that stuff. You can if you want to, but I'm not going to do any of it. Then on the bottom of page 20 and the top of page 21, these are some of the commands that you can run in here. All right, dot break, dot editor, dot exit, dot help. You can try the dot help. All right. Oh, what is it? Is it help? No, what is it? No. Right. Well, there is a help command that lists all the all the different things that you can use. It's not that big a thing. All right. You're virtually never going to use it like this, all right, where you're going to type in, you know, your own commands, etc. All right. Believe it or not, the next lesson, I'm kind of jumping ahead because we've already almost done all of that one, too. So the next one is called running a node.js application. It starts on page 22. Creating and saving a JavaScript file, did it. Running the JavaScript file with Node.js, did it. Loading files into REPL. Okay, we'll talk about that in just a second. All right. Now, if you want to, okay, you can go and create the program that's shown on the top of page 23. You see that where it says let print numbers? I do want to mention something. This, what they're showing in there, has got a couple things we haven't talked too much about. The first thing. You see where you got an equal sign followed by a greater than sign? Mm -hmm. That's called a fat arrow. All right. What that has done is it used to be in there you'd have to write the word function. And then in parentheses you'd have that ARR they showed there. So normally in, in the olden days, like a year, a few years ago, you type in let print numbers equal function, then in parens ARR, then the curly brace, and then the rest of it. Using the fat arrow syntax, it's a little bit of a shortcut. So instead of typing in function, you type in the equal sign followed by the greater than sign. And the, the, the uh, parameters, ARR is a parameter. The parameters go before that fat arrow. There's only one parameter, so you don't need parentheses. If there's two or more param parameters, you just put in, or if there's no parameters, you, you put in Parenthesis, parameter, comma, parameter, etc. Okay? All right. Uh, down towards the bottom of page 23, the author mentions on the bottom of page 23, hey, I'm going to use, use strict always, but I may or may not remember to mention it in here, but you should always use, use strict. The way that old-fashioned JavaScript worked is you could just start using variables without having to use a var or a let or a const or anything. You could just start using them. You can't do that when you've got strict mode. That's the biggest thing that it gives you. Okay, it doesn't let you create, uh, you know, those those global type of variables. Then on the top of page 24, assigning variables that can't be that can't be assigned. It doesn't let you do things you're not supposed to do, bottom line. Using non-unique function parameter names or property names in an object. Again, those things aren't that big. All right. So they had you do hello universe instead of hello world on page 24. Okay. 
again, then you can see it was node and they called it hello.js. It really doesn't matter. All right. Running individual JavaScript commands. This is page 23 and it goes on to 24 and 25. All right. Are you there? Mm -hmm. All right. So what they're doing right here is they're assuming they're going to be creating um, a program that's going to be one of these self-help things to try to make people feel good about themselves. So it is creating an array with three messages in it. A change of environment can be a good thing. You will make it just run with a code. So they have you create that and put it into a file. All right. And when you go up to the next page, I got new glasses last weekend and I might have to go take them back or something because none of this stuff works anymore. They fog up like every 30 seconds. Um, so where it says load messages.js and listing 2.2, can you see that? Mm -hmm. All right. That's assuming you've typed all this stuff in them. All right. And then they want you in REPL to type in this messages.4. All it's going to do is this program creates an array with three things in it. Okay, and then it prints them out. That makes sense? Yeah. All right. Now, also, if you notice down at the bottom there, and it's or it's in your book, it's got the word undefined. Can you see that? I'm on the bottom of page 26. Yeah. Listing 2-4. All functions in JavaScript return a value. The console log always shows that value. If you don't return anything, technically then what you've returned is undefined. All right. So that's what they're saying is we have returned undefined. All right. Now, believe it or not, we're already through unit zero. We went through the first 28 pages of the book. Is there anything that we did that you have any questions on? Anything that we did that doesn't make sense? All right. Uh, let's take 10 minutes. It's 110, so I'll start up at 120 and we'll go into unit one then.